Warren Wiersberg says it this way. He describes this valley of Baca as uh, any difficult or painful place in life where everything seems hopeless and you feel helpless like the pit of despair. Whether it's an actual physical thing or whether it is that place of pit of despair, some of you are walking through it, but you've got to remind yourself. You've got to start, begin to remind yourself, this is not my destination. My destination is to be in the presence of Almighty God. I will overcome through the power of Almighty God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Psalms 84, it says, in the Lord delight in the, the worship. It is a psalm of worshiper longing to be at the temple of Jerusalem. On their journey, however, they pass through this valley of weeping. The thing that we have to understand, it is those people, they are people whose strength is in God. There is your first step. The key for us to overcoming through this valley of weeping, we have to remind ourselves, it is God's strength that's going to sustain me and bring me through this. We have set our heart on God, and we have longed to, be in it, to yearn for His presence. And God's presence, it says in verse 2, that's what He was jealous of, that birds built a nest there, and He couldn't build a nest there. He wanted to worship God. He cried out to God. They would rather be at the threshing threshold of God's presence than anything else in the tents of the wicked. Let me show you this is not the only valley that some of you walked through. It's called the valley of darkness. Psalms 23, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of what? I will fear no evil because why? Come on, why? Why? Emmanuel, God with me. The Hebrew, my understanding, a scholar was talking to me one time, and he said that that Hebrew word there is amazing because it says, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death in the King James. But he says the Hebrew reads this way, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow, death I will not fear because you are with me. Though I walk through the valley of weeping, I will not fear because you are with me. In life, we will take turns. There will be things that will happen in our lives that are unexpected, that we feel like, why, God, why, God, are you making this happen? Why, Lord, is this going on in my life? And you're in that valley of weeping. You're in the valley of decisions. Look at what happens here in the valley of the trouble. Look at what Hosea said. He says, the Lord spoke through Hosea concerning the wayward people. I will make the valley of Achor into a gateway of hope. The word acre literally means trouble. Even though you are in the valley of trouble, I will give you a gateway of hope. Can I get a hallelujah? Whoa, glory to God in the highest. Blessed are those. The first key that we have to remind ourselves are, the thing that we have to remind ourselves when we find ourselves at Barak, the first thing that we have to remind ourselves are is that whose strength and where I get my strength from. Because if you get up there and you try it on your own strength, you will be defeated. It doesn't say, blessed are those who make it on their own. Paul says it this way, but when I am weak, he is strong. My strength is made perfect in my weakness. That doesn't make sense to the natural man because I've got to do these things. No, that's not what God's called us to do. He's called us to rely on him. He is my strength. Even though there's devastating things in my life, even though I'm pressing towards doing everything I know to do right, it seems like, God, where are you? And I'm pushing through this valley of Barak that the time of weeping and wailing and despair, I don't understand. I'm on my way to, that, to worship him. And it seems like everything comes against me. Remind yourself the first step out of that valley is know where your strength comes from. Hallelujah. Then he says in verse 5, he says, though, though I pass through this valley, for what joy of those whose strength comes from the Lord. And look at the second thing. Here's the second key for you to come out of that, uh, that valley of Barak. Here's the second thing. You have set their minds 
on the pilgrimage to Jerusalem. What? You have set your mind. You see, my current circumstances may be the valley, but I'm putting my mind on what God's Word says. I, my circumstances says it may be that you're in a bad place, but the good news is this is not my final destination. I'm only passing through. See that? I'm only passing through. My strength comes from God, and with Him, all things are possible. So the first thing out of your valley, you've got to remind yourself that the strength comes from God. Begin to be humble and saying, Lord, not my will be done, but thy will. Well, Pastor Steve, do you remember what Jesus prayed? He got there and he says, Lord, not my will be done, but thy will be done. He knew what was going to happen. He had already prophesied. He had spoken about going to the cross, going to the cross, laying it down for our sins. Yet when it came down to crunch time and he looked and he says, Lord, not my will, but thy will. Not what I want, but what you want. My current current circumstances may be the valley, but I need to fix my mind on those things that are good, honest, a pure report. For as I go through this valley, as I pass through this valley of Bach, the Brock, look at these things, this place of springs has nothing to do with anything, has nothing to do with it. This is a dry place. As you pass through that, see, that's where some of you are right now. It's a dry place, a dry place. And everything you quote unquote tried didn't work you're on your way to serve God all hell comes against you everything comes against you the thing that I want to remind you is there are springs the autumn rain is covered will cover and make pools now that don't make any sense to us what does that tell us we may be in the valley but it does not have to be our destination we are passing through it look at what happens we are on our way to the city of refuge we are on our way to a place we are on our way to a place to go through this we're on our place to see what God has for us we're only passing through this place for a temporary time you see I'm going to get to a place that I'm called to we've got to get to the city of refuge had to travel through this valley of tears because it was not there that you learned the blessings of God it was that there you learned who God was the intimacy the intimacy with God for many the valley of this pathway is a a place of peace Some of you have gone and some of you are there now and you don't understand how to get there. Let me just encourage you. Strengthen yourself in the power of the Lord, number one. Fix your mind on those things that are above, on what his word says. And then, this is the amazing thing. In verse 6, he says, as you pass through the valley of Barak, they made it a, make it a place of springs. The autumn rains also covered the pool. Now, this is amazing because there, and I think this is the NIV, he says the rains covered it with pools. That doesn't make any, make any sense to us, does it? Until we find out what the King Jimmy says, make it a well. What? Make it a well? In your dry places, here's a, here I want to encourage you doing this. Ready for this? When you are in a dry place, dig a well. When you're in a dry place, dig a well. Why? Dig a small hole, a container, so when the rain comes, you can catch it. Show, here's what God is saying. You show me your faith, and I will show you my faithfulness. You show me your faith. Dig a well. Make a well. Well, there's no rain coming. Doesn't, I don't care. You dig it, and you show me your faith, and I will show you my faithfulness. Yes. You dig it, and I will fill it. Yes. 
to get you out of your dry place, your valley of tears. Dig a well. Believe God again. Hope again. Begin to begin to prophesy again. Begin to declare the word. Begin to pray in the spirit. I don't feel like it. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying get up whether you feel like it or not. Begin to get ready. The rain's coming. Yeah. Do something. Get up and do something. Don't sit there licking your wounds. Get that, get, scrape all your wounds. I've been sick. Curse God and die. That's what some people will tell you. But I love what Job said. Even though you slay me, yet will I serve you. You ain't getting me away from you, God, because I know you're the true and living God. There's none like you. You gave me my family. I don't know how you're going to do it. You're going to bless me even more. Even when friends are saying, give up on God and die. You go out, I had a lady one time look at me and say, I'm looking for a man. I was a youth pastor in Lake City. I was in Tallahassee. I'm looking for a man. I said, well, that's good. Have you trust God? No, I'm going to do it the way I want to. I'm going to a bar. I said, you're going to find a man, all right? Let me know how that works for you. You've got to realize this valley of rock is a place flourishing, even though you don't see it now. Do you remember what the Bible says in James? If you draw near to me, what is what his promise? I will draw near to you. If you seek me, you will find me. If you make room for me, I will reveal myself to you. The problem is, we're over here scraping our wounds feeling sorry for ourselves because we've been hurt. We're, we're serving God, doing everything right, paying tithes, saying, well, all hell comes against me. Pastor, it's never happened to you. Are you kidding me? It was in those times I learned intimacy who God was. And that's why after almost 50 years of ministry, I can stand up and declare the word of God. I have never seen the righteous forsaken, nor their seed begging for bread. That God will be with you when they look at you and give you a bad report. That God is still going to be there. Why? Because it was those times I had to dig a well when I didn't feel like it. And I didn't feel like getting up and preaching. I didn't feel like none of that. I wanted to quit and give up on everything that I perceived. And I went on in there, not in my strength, but in his strength. He showed up. When I dug that well, God filled it. Brought me out of my mess. He'll do the same for you because he's no respecter of persons. Be still and know that I'm God. Prepare for the presence of God. God never says you won't go through these valleys. But what he promised you was this. You'll never go through those valleys alone. He was the fourth man in the fire with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. He was the person over there, in that, over there in the passenger seat when they looked and he says, I don't know how you lived through this accident. He was there for you and with you when you didn't even know that he was there protecting you better than those airbags could ever prepare and meet you. He was there when, y'all, when they said that shot was supposed to kill you, but it didn't because God had a purpose for you. He was there. He's never left you nor has he forsaken you, even though many times you walk in and walk out of his life. But the good news is today we're back and let's go hard after him (sighs) oh he's your light in the darkness he is your peace in your storm he's your joy in your trouble he's your strength when you are weak enjoy him on the mountain but you get to know him in the valleys that's when we want to pull back I don't want to go through this suffering I don't want to God has not left you, and he has not forsaken you. Bethany, would you come? Every enjoy him on the mountain, get to know him in the valley, seek his strength, fix your mind, dig a well. Look in Psalms 139, verse 7. Where can I go? Where can I go from you, Lord? From your spirit. 
where can I go? Where can I flee from you, your presence? Is it through that valley of Barak? Is it through the valley of tears? Is it in the valley of troubles? That, that's when you say, oh, 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 I can't cross that boundary because, you know, this is no man's land, and especially it's not there for me. If I go to heaven, you are there. If I go to my bed in the depths, you are there. If I rise on the wings of the dawn, I will settle on the far side of the, the sea. Even there, your hands will guide me. Your right hand will hold me fast. The good news for today is not that we have not going to go through a valley, because we'll go through it at times. The good news is you're not going through it alone. For some of you today, you're going through that valley right now. It's not what you've done wrong, it's what you're doing right. You've set up your mind that you're going on a pilgrimage. You're going to go after God like you never have before. It's like everything that you've done has just gone in reverse. Don't you dare be discouraged and don't you dare weep. Though you wept through the night, I love the scripture. Though you wept through the night, joy comes in the morning. Has nothing to do with this thing on your wrist. Has everything to do with revelation has everything to do with the revelation of who Jesus is. Has everything to do with who Christ is in you. Though you wept through the night, though you walked through the valley of Barak, though you feel like there's no more hope, I wish, I hope, I dreamed, I don't know what else to do. God is here with you today. And he wants to minister to you. For those who are watching us today by Facebook, thank you for joining us. I pray this message has been a word of hope and encouragement to you. And wherever you're at and whatever you're going through, remember that you're not in there alone. The key to this day of celebration is one word. Christ Emmanuel. God is with you. So thank you for joining us today. God bless you. For these that are here.